uh, raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens. Um, yes, my favorite things. Um, yesterday I made a little video about this pen and I was talking about how depressing it is. So I'm going to change my mood because I did have a number of people talking about depression and I didn't really want that to be the thing that people remembered about the the video. So I will talk about depression, but I'm going to talk about ways that I have found of feeling better. Um, one of the things that uh, when I when I think about pens, um, and I think about them, and I think about you, the people that might buy a pen from me, um, when I think about it from a business point of view, I would make more money working at McDonald's for the amount of time it takes me to, to find a pen, to fix a pen, to make the pen work, and to sell the pen to you or to anyone else. Um, I, the time that I was spent doing that in the, quote, profit I make would be better spent by either sleeping in late that day and not dealing with pens at all, or working at McDonald's and getting the benefit of eating a french fry or two. But what makes me smile is not the business end of selling a pen to you, but the fact that I know that the pen, when it's in your hands, is going to do marvelous things. And so selling pens to artists, to calligraphers, to sometimes to collectors, though lesser than a pen that's being sold to someone who's going to be using it. Um, selling a pen to a collector, I don't get the joy of convincing the person that they've got this magnificent thing that's in their hands that they've never uh, experienced before. Collectors have pens that are much nicer than this, much rarer than this, uh, much more valuable than this, and many collectors don't actually write with the pens, so they don't get any joy out of the actual nib. Uh, or the experience of the word that they write, or the uh, picture that they draw. But, um, so the joy for me is not a financial joy. If I, if I thought about it as a business, I would really be depressed. But it's about getting the pen in the right hands. So, that's always fun. I just have to forget about the the business end of it. Another person suggested that I take this pen out and write with it because this would make me smile. And it's a gr lovely pen. It also has a very, very nice nib. Very, very springy. It's a pen that I'm a little bit afraid of using myself because um, it's so springy, and uh, I sometimes distrust. I don't distrust the nib. It's my my own um, fear of damaging it somehow. But thank you, Todd, for suggesting I take this out, and it does make me smile. It makes me smile more. This is where my where I start acting like a pen collector, not a pen user. Um, because it's so beautiful. This is in such nice shape. Yes, it has the wrong lever. It was missing the lever when I bought it, and I haven't found the right lever to put in it. The lever works perfectly fine, but it needs a, a lever that's a few, a decade earlier. But, wow, what a lovely pen. GWW is engraved in the top there. Beautifully engraved. It's lovely condition. 
beautiful nib that scares me. So let's look at this pen. This pen doesn't scare me at all. It's but it really makes me smile because it has this very, very fine line. There's, there's a line in there. And it comes from a pen that's rather quiet. Um, I bought this pen, this part of the pen I bought recently, and it had a cap that uh, did not screw on it correctly. So uh, I found a, a cap in my parts bin that works perfectly fine and it also is the correct cap the other cap that it was that it had was not correct um, for a number of reasons which I won't go into so this is now even though these two never existed uh, together until I put them there 70 years after the fact or 60 years after the fact, it works better now than it did when I got it. It's a uh, lifetime Schaefer. Does it have a lifetime nib? It does have a lifetime nib. Sometimes I, I end up putting the wrong cap that has a lifetime dot on it on a pen that isn't a lifetime nib. Um, this one however does. This is correct. Um, my Frankenpenning, yes, sometimes I do put the wrong cap. You know, it's missing some... If, it, if this had did not have that little white dot there, it would not be the correct cap for this pen. Even though it would work perfectly fine, it would not be correct. Um, sometimes in the world of pen repair, you don't have a choice. You don't have the exact cap. So you put a cap that works perfectly fine. It's just missing that white dot. But look, look at this line it makes. Beautiful. There was some, <laughs> I'm just laughing at my, my scribbles. My, there was a, a, a customer, not a customer, there was a viewer of a, uh, friend of mine, mine does uh, fountain pen posts, and he sandwiched in some of my handiwork along with his handiwork, and the, the comment on the YouTube posting that had, had us, he said, I'm sorry, but looking at Mr. Gustafson's scribbles makes me lose the will to live. Excuse me, which was a little bit funny, I thought, um, because my things don't say anything. Well, they don't have to say anything. You know, I'm getting in my car not to go to the grocery store to buy that milk I need for my Captain Crunch cereal. I'm going in my car because I want to take a drive in it. That's what I do with these pens often. I drive. I just roll down the windows and point it in a direction, turn off Google Maps, and I just have fun. Um, and my Cheerios or my Captain Crunch at home remains milkless because I don't actually go anywhere in my car. I just drive it. And that's what I love doing with these pens. Often, you'll find pages and pages and pages of, of things that are meaningless, except that while I use the pens, I'm smiling. I am smiling. And if it causes you or you to get out the razor blades and aspirin bottle and revolver and aim it at your head, that's not my problem. Um, I'd like I'd like you 
and you and you that are about to commit suicide because of my scribblings to take a pen like this and scribble. Make a line. The joy of the feeling the pen in your hand and looking at the line that it makes. Uninterrupted line is really, it's really a joy. Is it not? You understand it, you understand it. You with the gun in your hand, I need to help you a little bit longer, a little more. I have to. So what is it about just scribbling that is, is of value? Well, <clears throat> I'm, I'm thinking, you know, don't pull that trigger yet. I, it's just taking me a little bit of time to try to come up with the words to convince someone who, who thinks about a pen as a tool to do a specific task rather than as a tool to appreciate. Now, I don't want to, I'm not trying to turn you into a pen collector. You know, people that collect hammers, for example. Do I have a hammer here? No. I imagine there are hammer collectors in the world, and they are no more want to use that hammer to drive a nail into the wall, but they collect the tool because the wood is warm in their hand. They see, they feel the the weight of the hammer. They know the use of the, even though they don't do Finnish carpentry themselves, they know that this was designed for a Finnish carpenter. Where, where that other hammer they have in their collection is a sledgehammer and used to break up rocks. Um, they don't need to break up rocks or drive a nail into that two by four. Um, so, don't pull that trigger yet. I'm still trying to come up with why making a line with a pen, making a line that does not have meaning, has value. So, think of it as exercises. You know, think of it as your morning jog. You know, when you're out jogging, you don't go to the grocery store and then jog back home because your milk will get all fizzy and lumpy or whatever as you're churning up and down as you're jogging. No, you, you, you run because it's good for you. And just scribbling, just making that line is good for me. It's teaching me how to move my hand gracefully, my arm gracefully. It's telling me how to, it's teaching me how to press down at the right time. Um, yes, I can do that while I'm writing a word. Word. You know what really depresses me? back to depression. I'm playing wor words with friends with a friend right now. And when we play words with friends together, we come very close to never wanting to speak to each other again because, you know, I'm sitting there with a bunch of letters and I put them together and I use all seven letters and I get all sorts of points. I did that yesterday. And it's a word, I made a word that I didn't know what the meaning was. Um, but I, but I put the words, the letters were put together in such a way that it could conceivably be a word. S-T-A-N-G-E-D. Stanged. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I got all sorts of points because I used all seven letters and the little word meter went up to the top and gave me little bells and whistles and chimes or whatever, little harp music that it makes. 
when you use all seven letters and when you can see that you got the highest possible score. We all like that. We all want to get a hole in one. But I didn't know what stanged was. It's clearly a verb. I stang, you stang, we were stanging the other day when he got stanged really bad and had to go to the hospital. So I looked up what stanged, you know, the dictionary button you can press on the thing. And it said, it said that this word is a valid word in our game, but it has no meaning. And we're working on our dictionary to come up with it. Well, no. N-O. N fucking O. No. That is not a word. It should not have allowed me to play it. Because it does not have a meaning yet. So, that depresses me. <laughs> and, and yet I did it, because I got all these points. But I don't understand why this words with friends allows words that do not have meanings. And then when you use a word like stanged, you, you should be able to also, clearly that's a verb, you should be able to use the uh, present tense of it. Stang or stange. I don't know exactly Stang, the bird stang, uh, the bee stang me, that's a word maybe, but stange maybe isn't. But, or when you have, you put a word with friends that is a valid word, but they don't have a definition and you put an S on it, well, clearly you've got two of those things that don't exist yet. But it doesn't allow you to put an S on it. So what, what is that all about? You with the gun. You now have a purpose in life. You figure that out and let me know. Because it drives me crazy. It makes me want to pick up that gun and shoot myself. Or shoot the people that allow this to happen. How is this possible? Anyway, here's a pen. Let's go back to pens. I'm getting off my soapbox. Here's a pen that I that did does make me smile. It did make me smile and it does make me smile. It's a swan pen with a nice rubbery nib, and I bought it in Philadelphia from the Fountain Pen Hospital. They had pens that they were selling for a collector, and it did not work. It was not working, and at the time, I didn't have one of these, so I bought it, and I, I thought it had a more complicated filling system than it does, and I was able to fill it. I, I, I thought at the moment that I, I might have to hire someone else to f fix it for me, but it's just a rubber sack in here, and it has this little twisty button on the back that squeezes the rubber sack. I thought it was a piston thing of some sort, but it's really a nice, flexible, as you can see, flexible um, gold nib and it's a very rounded tip that I really like drawing with this pen because it's so uh, rubbery. And there's a certain, there's a weight that this pen has that it, it seems heavier than it should. When you pick it up, when I pick it up, it just has, it weighs a little tiny bit more than I expected it to weigh. And what is, why is that important? Because it's heavier, I have this sense that it's sturdier and stronger. Now, there's no reason for me to believe that it is, based on its weight, but it's a perception that I have. And that little tiny bit of weight adds a little tiny thought in my head which makes me be a little bit more aggressive with how I draw it. Look at that. It's weird. Um, and I'm able to be a little bit more aggressive with this pen, a little bit more forceful, and I can draw things in a different way than if I was using this pen. 
and this one might weigh a little bit more, but this one has that nib that scares me. This one does not scare me. And that little bit of weight helps me draw a certain way. Or make lines that make you want to shoot yourself. But now you have you have a purpose in life. You have to figure out why these words are allowed. Why words that don't have definitions are allowed. It's like when they say, we allow this word, but there is no definition yet. It, it makes it sound like there's words waiting in line. There's a whole bunch of words that are already made by the word makers at the word factory. And they're just waiting in line, you know, patiently waiting in line until someone invents something. They make a new gizmo that's electrical. So, here, so here's this new thing, and they're waiting to call it something. So they, they send a letter to the factory, and the factory says, well, this is the next in line, Hobson's Choice. You have to call it a stange. That's a stange. And it's the, the thing is, it's a noun, and it's also the verb. To use this thing is stanging. So there you go. It's a stange. And the, the larger version of this is the deluxe stange. So when you, and when you use it, it's, you, you, the verb is to stange. And it's a regular verb, so it follows all the normal rules of verb, verbs. So there you go. And then someone else, you know, can write an email while smoking a cigarette. And that that activity now has a new name. So then they, they, they too, uh, go to this factory and they pick this word, which is already allowed in that game. But now it has a meaning. It means to send an email while smoking a cigarette. What would that what would that word be? Would that be staging? Maybe that maybe that was in line. Maybe that was the need first before this thing was invented and in staging. I, you know, I I really have to give up staging because, you know, I cough too much while I'm writing my emails. So, or when I want to have a cigarette, I don't like writing emails. I don't like staging. I just want to smoke. So, anyway, it, it drives me mental. You can tell that, can't you? Stanging. Okay, back to this pen. This is what started it all, this depressing pen. It's not depressing. It's making me smile. Look at that nib. It's really, I mean, it's writing better now than it was the other day, yesterday. It's not giving me the same joy that this one gives me, though. This one has, it's, it's fine, it's fine is finer. So if I, if I had to say goodbye to one of these, I'd say goodbye to this one first. Even though they're they're quite similar in terms of how they write, except this one is a little bit finer. So, is everyone okay? The guns are down. The razor blades are are put back in the bathroom. The uh, pills are put away. Like you put your gun down, right? Because you're now trying to figure out the words. Thing. So we're, everyone's okay. Everyone's fine. That person who lost the will to, will to live because I don't make words with my scribbles. Are you okay? You now know why I do this. It's instead of jogging, instead of going to the gym 
and lifting up a really big heavy thing and putting it right back where I found it. That's I could be doing that over and over and over again, but that would that would cause me to lose my will to live, let me tell you. I go through all this trouble to lift this big heavy thing and I put it right back. Dumb. You know, build a wall. Take you know, use those muscles to lift a big heavy rock and move it over to where that other big heavy rock is and then you could do that over and over again and you'll have a nice wall. Well, huge wall. Beautiful wall. Right? Bye.